So the very first thing I want to do before I get started on the gloss coat is to cover these holes. I don't want any epoxy getting down in there. And it would really be a problem if that epoxy dripped down into these holes and then into our tunnel area and then cured there because then it's almost impossible to get in and get rid of those drips. And any drips within the tunnel will prevent the fuselage from going in. So I'm just going to take a bit of masking tape and then with a sharp knife pretty much just trim away a little covering for each of these holes so you can see there we have a nice covering it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be but get it pretty close just like that and I'm gonna do that with all three of these all right so I have all three covered and that's pretty much what we're looking for just make sure that they're pressed down and we have a nice seal going all the way around all three of them all right so back in the glassing room and similar to when we glass the wing when we put our top coats on our gloss coats I'm going to put a tape line on this just as we did earlier and that's going to prevent drips from running down and onto the other side of the wing. And that just keeps things clean. Otherwise, you have a lot of drips to sand off. So definitely recommend using some masking tape and just masking off this area. So I will also be masking off that trailing edge as well. And you can see how I have, I have this tape placed here. And it's just overhanging that trailing edge just a bit. And that's just going to keep epoxy from again flowing down into onto the other side and also if there's any imperfections on that trailing edge this will kind of act as a little bit of a, a little bit of a dam and it will let that resin kind of fill in and thicken up in here and so that'll make it easier if we have any slight imperfections that need to be filled in and then sanded smooth in the, in the later stage all right so just another quick look at the setup here so once again, very important, we have these holes taped off, nothing's getting in there. Trailing edge is taped off, and then you can see leading edge is taped just as we have pretty much always done. I like to leave it hanging too, just to make sure drips don't flow over the tape and then onto the top side of the wing. So just like that, working it down into the wing tips. Just keep it off the other side is really the uh, the main goal here. And I'm going to place the wing down. And just like when we did our trailing edge, it helps to kind of get this wing sitting level because we don't want all that epoxy flowing off. So I'm gonna use a little wedge here in the corner and that's gonna keep this surface relatively flat. And so now I'm just going to mix up a little cup of epoxy and then brush on that gloss coat. Okay, so gloss coat pretty easy to do, pretty self-explanatory. So we just have some epoxy. I'm going to just kind of get it spread out across the surface of the wing here. And with a brush, I'm just going to, at first, just work it across the surface, try to get everything covered in epoxy. And then I'm going to come back and do a few bit of nice and even strokes just to even things out and ensure we have good even coverage over the whole wing. And so once we get to this finishing stage, uh, you can really put in as much work as you want. So if you want to do one gloss coat and it didn't turn out as nice as you'd like it to, you can do another. Um, you know, you can sand off any imperfections in that first one and then do another one and that will generally yield better results so you can put in as much work as you want you really don't even need to gloss coat it if you really don't want to but uh, i would definitely recommend putting a gloss coat on there all right so we have the whole thing nice and even covered and usually what i like to do is just some relatively light brush pressure will come at a diagonal go across the whole wing and then I'll come again working from the other side at the opposite diagonal and then I just like to finish out with nice strokes going 
all the way across. And I will start to sort of curve them as we get up to that leading edge and then do the leading edge. And then I will also make sure to knock down any big drips that might have formed on the leading edge just by going like this. Make sure there's no drips. And that's pretty much it. And if there were any areas on the trailing edge that needed attention, I would make sure that they're getting enough epoxy. Right now, we're looking very good, so I don't really need to get in anywhere. All right, so with the gloss coat down, down, I'm just going to let it cure up, and I will come in and pull the tape when that epoxy is again at that easy stage where it's not fully cured, but I'll get a nice clean tape line. You can just wait for it to fully cure, but you might have a little extra tape that gets stuck that you need to kind of peel off uh, with some more effort. So let it cure up and peel the tape when it's ready. All right, so I've taped off the bottom side, which we just put a gloss coat on, and that's going to allow me to flip the wing over and then gloss the top side. So same process, just use the brush get that uh, epoxy on there and avoid, just be careful around the inlet to the tunnel where the fuselage goes into. We don't wanna get any massive drips going down in there. If you do, it's not really the end of the world because you are able to get right in on the edge and sand something out, but uh, just take a little care and, and try not to get any epoxy in there. I'm also going to do the other side of our stabilizer. You can see I, had a, I didn't tape this off. I just had a couple of little drips here and I'm just gonna leave those for now and go in and gloss it anyways with those drips because I'm going to sand those out later. But you can see that top side really looks really nice. So we're gonna get back to glossing up these two parts. All right, so we're now fully glossed up on both the main wing and our stabilizer here. And depending on how your gloss job went, if you, if you want to leave it with a gloss, you can. But you're definitely going to have to sand away some of these rough edges here. So what I normally do is I just like to go with a sanded finish. So I'll sand this whole wing and the stabilizer down to about 220. I think that's more than enough for a nice sanded finish. And that just allows you to get a nice smooth... Uh, surface and get rid of any little bumps or anything that might have happened during the gloss coat. So it's pretty straightforward really just get sanding and work off those high spots first and just be careful not to sand too deep into the actual glass. So if you do sand through the gloss and sand a little bit into the glass it's really not too big of a deal because remember we do have many many layers on the main wing especially so if you if if you start sanding into many, many layers and then you can feel that the glass is now not hard and it's kind of soft and indenting into the foam, you've definitely sanded into that glass a little too much. And so I would repatch that with more glass and then sand, start sanding over again. So just be careful as you go. Try not to burn into the glass too much. And I'm just going to work my way around uh, both sides of these and get them all sanded up. So that's when I'll see you next. So everything is nice and sanded up. Nice smooth finish here. And I'm going to drill in the holes here for the stabilizer. So I used a square, or you can just use a ruler. And I just marked the line going down the center of these, these holes here. And the spacing on our rear inserts is 35 millimeters. So I'm just going to mark 35 millimeters and then drill out holes for those bolts. So the last thing I'm going to do after these holes are drilled, and I'm going to do it on our main wing holes as well, is just countersink these holes a bit so that the screws fit flush with the wing surface. And a so this is a countersink bit that I'll usually use. Very useful. This is probably uh, what I would recommend. They're usually pretty cheap, so they're not too bad to find. And if you don't have something like this, usually you can just take a much larger drill bit than the hole you just drilled and these will have an angle on the bottom that pretty much acts as a countersink you just need to be a little more careful with the depth that you'll use just make sure you don't go a little bit too deep with one of these so whichever method you prefer uh, countersink up these holes
So the last thing I do before I give this foil a final clean and then paint it is I'm just going to fit on the rear stabilizer. And the reason I'm doing this is to check and see how level it is with the main wing there. So sometimes this stabilizer might be angled to the side and that's mostly due because of how we glassed that flat spot. So remember, we glassed this flat spot right in here and sometimes, you know, it doesn't remain perfectly flat as you do that, especially when you put in those gloss coats. And so you might end up getting a little bit, a slight angle on there in reference to the main wing. And a little bit is okay. I just checked this one and I definitely think it's fine with how it is. It's not perfectly straight, but it's not way off. So I think it's definitely within spec for this build model that we're doing here. But if you really want to dial it in perfectly, I find it's easier to sand down this area of the fuselage as opposed to here because on this bottom side of the fuselage, there is a lot of carbon to work with. And especially with that tail section, um, there's definitely, you don't need as much. So you can get away with sanding a little bit. So if you notice that it's angled a little bit in this direction, when it's bolted onto the fuselage, you can definitely, I would recommend getting a flat sanding block and sand away and just kind of mindfully try to sand a bit more off of this edge, that edge, than this edge. And you'll eventually be able to dial this, fus this stabilizer to be perfectly flat where you want it. So normally it's usually ends up within spec and you won't have that much of a problem. But if you do have like a lot of gloss that pulled up in here or something like that, and it's, it's off and you're not happy with that, that is how I recommend dialing it, dialing it in to get it flat with the wing. All right, so if you are happy with how things came out, you can definitely leave it as is and just go have fun with it. If you're not happy with how your finish came out, you can always gloss it again and sand back and get it smoother. And it, you know, if you keep messing up, just take a little time, make sure it's clean and then re-gloss and re-sand. And you can keep doing that and build up a nice gloss layer to really sand down into. And you can get a really perfect finish on all these parts. It's up to you. It's up to how much time you want to put into it. So for this being the build model that I'm doing here for the video, I'm happy with how it is right now. And I have it sanded to a 220 grit and I'm just going to clean up the surfaces and I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint. Um, definitely gonna paint this a solid color just to get rid of that wood look in there. And I'll definitely be painting up the wing as well. Usually just like some sort of black stripes, something like that. And I usually just paint with black stripes because the black and white stripe, when you film a video with it, it tends to look pretty good in the water. Just allows people to see it better. So I usually go with that pattern for build examples. But you can paint it whatever color you want. I generally like to just use, so you can certainly use whatever sort of paints uh, will work for you, but I tend to just like to use spray paint if I'm painting them. And so just a basic spray paint right here. And then if you want, you can follow and do the whole part with some gloss just to protect your paint a little bit, but it's not necessary. So really just some black spray paint and I'm just gonna mask off some stripes and get to it. All right, so paint's on and everything came out looking great. And so I went with a white with black stripes on the stabilizer and then this wing was white to begin with. So I just did some black here and a stripe or two out on the edge. Same pattern on the bottom. And I think they look great. Came out really well. The finish is great. Nice and smooth. Uh, I really like that sanded finish. And then once you get some paint on, especially the stabilizer, things really start to pop and look really good. All right, so all that's left to do is to bolt the foil together and we'll get a look at what the final build looks like. All right, so there we have it. The foil's finished. It's looking great. This thing is 100% ready to go. Just throw it on a board and have a lot of fun with it. So just kind of get another look at it. Our base plate up there, going down to the carbon fuselage and then into our wing that we made, and then also the stabilizer out in the back. So just a quick wrap up here. All the foils are built the same. So this again was the 2300 size, and whether it's the 15 or the 3000 or whatever other sizes come out between there, uh, they're all built in the same style. Really the only difficult part that I really wanted to focus on was that tunnel process of getting that fuselage to fit 
into that tunnel perfectly. Um, makes for a really strong, really tight fitting joint with absolutely zero play. So that's just really the highlight of the build. The rest is pretty straightforward. We saw how that goes. If you've seen previous builds, you already know how that goes as well. So that's all I have for this build. I haven't edited the video yet. I'm sure it will be quite long. I might even break it into multiple parts, which will still be quite long. And I have it long because I really throw a lot of information in there because I want, if you're building this, I want you to have all the tips and information you need to make it successful and not only successful, but have something in the end that's, that's really nice and professional. So that is it for the carbon kits, the build it yourself kits. I hope you enjoyed. I, I hope you enjoyed the video at least, and if you're building it, I hope everything comes out great and you've been able to follow the video and, and make everything work out and you're happy with what you have in the end.